This week on the internet is a series where I cover all the topics I missed during the week. And first up, we have AI phones. So Google, Samsung, and Apple are desperate to get AI on their phones. Assuming these all run locally, I don't see the issue with this. It just makes Siri useful. But if these things need servers to run, I don't know how long they'll be around. But regardless of cost and whatever, I just hope this makes phone assistance not lobotomized. And if you want to improve your gaming experience, this thing exists now. It's a game scent atomizer that uses AI to determine what smells to release into the air while you're gaming. It currently has six scents, and those are gunfire, explosions, racing, clean air, storm, and forest. All of these scents are pretty broad, especially racing and clean air. Racing probably just smells like tire rubber and exhaust fumes, and clean air probably just smells like a mall or something. I just don't know what that would be because pumping aerosols into your room to smell your game is the opposite of having clean air. It costs $180, which is also kind of expensive. I don't know who the target demographic for this is. It might be good for VR, but other than that, this just seems kind of annoying. And in more AI news, unfortunately, we have the Willy Wonka AI experience in Scotland. Scotland. Basically, some guy had ChatGPT write a Willy Wonka script, and he hired some people to perform that script. The script had lines like, what is an evil chocolate maker for a start? Does he make evil chocolate, or is he an evil man who makes chocolate? And what do you mean he lives in the walls? Yeah, ChatGPT wrote about an evil man who makes chocolate and lives in your walls. With just one line of the script, you can see why this would scare children. They even had an actor play the man who lives in your walls, and he's not friendly looking. But props to the people that tried to make this a decent experience for the kids that went, because none of these people got paid. Oh, and apparently the kids who went were given lemonade and a single jelly bean, which is unfortunate, but also kind of funny. I'd also like to point out that there's a lot of AI generated Willy Wonka images floating around that are ridiculously bad. And they're using that as an example of the advertising. And I think that's a little misleading. The website has only a few images and I can see why people would fall for this based on the website. And I will also say this could be faked without AI. AI is not an integral part of the scam. I just want to be clear that this isn't some example of AI ruining the world because there's been enough news about that recently. And yeah, AI made this scam easier, but they could have easily just stolen images off Google. Next up, we have a quick topic. Mark Zuckerberg went to Japan and made a katana. My only point with this is somehow Mark Zuckerberg not only has become more human, he has also become the most likable tech billionaire because Jeff Bezos is just a bozo and Elon Musk is lobotomized. Even though the guy steals everyone's data, I like him more than these two, especially Elon Musk. Talk about a fall from grace, man. All he had to do was shut up and people would have liked him, but no. Uh, next up, we have layoffs, which sucks. Sony laid off 900 employees total, all from different studios and it's pretty much all their studios, including Insomniac Games, which has carried the PlayStation. I I get that all these places are having layoffs, but it's ruthless to lay off people from the studios that are performing well. EA is also laying off 670 employees. And honestly, I am surprised it took EA this long because it's EA. And they also canceled a bunch of projects, including a Star Wars FPS from Respawn. And I just want to say, I wish they'd just make Titanfall 3. But EA said in general, they're going to start moving away from licensed IP. And they're doubling down on sports games because of course they are. That makes total sense because the people who buy these sports games generally don't care that they are nickel and dime. And in other news with EA, EA Sports WRC crashed on February 29th because it was leap year. EA's solution to this was just change your console's date settings. To me, this implies leap year was not programmed into the game, which is especially funny because this game came out less than a year ago. Like they knew this was coming up. Next up, we had the Tesla Roadster. Elon Musk said on Twitter that they're targeting a zero to 60 under one second. And for some backstory on this car, it was announced in November, 2017. And now Elon Musk wants to try and hit a zero to 60 of under one second. For some context, the fastest production car in existence currently is the Dodge Demon. And that car is literally just designed to perform on this zero to 60 and its fastest time was 1.66 seconds and the tires on that thing are barely street legal if you try and get a car under one second zero to 60 you are asking to break the laws of physics also that sounds awful to drive a zero to 60 of one second would be 2.7 g's it's actually too much especially since elon musk wants to achieve this with rockets which is just not gonna happen and if it does it's gonna be bad next up we have microsoft investing in an ai startup called lay chat that is all i know about it i just thought the chatbot's name was funny because it reminded me of rage comics next we have subway Way, charging somebody $1,021.50 for a Subway sandwich. The crazy part about this is when they went back to the store for help, the location was just shut down and their bank refused to refund them, even though they had a receipt and it was literally one sandwich. And it turns out this isn't the only time a Subway did this. A Subway in Connecticut charged someone $7,000 for a single sandwich. Neither of these stories say if they got a refund or not, but I feel like they did because there is no world where any real human looks at this receipt and thinks it's not a problem. But real humans did design this laptop that has a transparent display. This thing is cool and the technology is impressive, but I think a transparent display is one of the single most useless things to put on a laptop ever, which is probably why they have no plans to mass produce or sell this laptop. Realistically, this kind of thing would 
be used for like AR because even though we traditionally thought of clear displays as being futuristic I really don't think they have a purpose besides being cool and the tech is nowhere near ready to be put in AR goggles or something we barely have functional VR and something else that is cool is Joel from Helldivers 2 so I didn't know this but Helldivers 2 has a dungeon master who alters the difficulty of the game as players progress and then sick to explain the game a bit because I was pretty clueless before I played basically there's a bunch of planets and you have to liberate them for super earth which really just means conquer but we don't talk about that part but players can help liberate planets by dropping down and completing missions it is a four-player co-op game but it's all interconnected so if you beat missions on whatever planet you help liberate that planet and fill up this bar and it's the dungeon master's job joel in this case to make sure we don't have too much fun uh, but seriously, I'm impressed with Hellivers 2. It is probably one of the best co-op games to come out in years. The only other co-op game I recommend as much is Deep Rock Galactic, and you also fight bugs in that game. And since it's so successful, a game developer decided to change their name to Helldivers 2 on Steam and also change their publishing studio to PlayStation and their developer tag to Arrowhead Game Studios. I am honestly surprised that's even possible, and it didn't happen sooner with a different game. Maybe it has, and I'm unaware, but it's pretty scummy to try to scalp sales like this. Steam has an excellent refund policy, so I don't know why they thought this would work. They'd obviously be caught at some point when they have like 100% refunds or something? It just seems really stupid and short-sighted. I don't get it. It's more gaming news. Borderlands 4 might be coming soon. It's a lot of fan speculation right now, which makes sense because Borderlands came out in 2019 and they're releasing a movie soon as well. I think a lot of game companies saw how well the Cyberpunk anime did for the game and they're trying to copy it. The problem is, is the Cyberpunk anime is good. So the Borderlands movie has to be good for this to work. And I don't know if it will be. But in creepy news, we have vending machines with facial recognition. This vending machine in the University of Waterloo, Canada was caught using facial recognition to collect data on students' preferences, which is dystopian and I don't like it especially since this stupid machine was only caught because it had a facial recognition error. And where they put the camera is kind of stupid. You see this little black dot? That's the camera. It looks like a defect in the paint. And because of that, I feel like people would have eventually figured out it's a camera or paint over it or something because it's annoying to look at. Uh, the university claims to be unaware, which I kind of believe them. Once they learned about it, they shut down the vending machines until they could be removed. So at least the university didn't sell out the students. But HP sold out because they're now offering a printer subscription service. And no, this is unfortunately not a joke. You can subscribe to rent a printer from HP, anywhere from $7 a month to $13 a month. If you want to print 200 pages a month, it costs $7. And if you want to print 700 pages a month, it costs $30 six dollars this is utterly insane pricing why would i ever in my life pay 14 dollars a month minimum to rent a printer oh but don't worry guys if you have any issues with your piece of garbage printer you'll have 24 7 support it's especially insane because you can subscribe to me down below for free but this is the same company that's already price gouging on ink cartridges this is honestly a clown world and unfortunately in this sad clown world we will not be getting an apple car it is truly unfortunate apple reportedly spent about 10 billion dollars working on this car and they just ended up scrapping it uh, but it makes sense they scrapped the idea because they already have Apple CarPlay and they're working with car manufacturers who have even more integration with CarPlay. Porsche and Ashton Martin showed off their CarPlay interfaces and they look pretty good. Not sure if the gauges are part of the CarPlay, but if they are, terrible design, these suck. Other than that though, it looks good. The teams are working on the car got reassigned to Apple's AI projects, which makes sense as well with them wanting more AI products. The car was also supposed to be autonomous and we know how well that's going with Tesla. Remember guys, full self-driving by 2017. It's just around the corner. And on the topic of AI again, Elon Musk is suing Sam Altman and OpenAI for breaking their promise to benefit humanity broadly. Some experts think this case actually holds weight, and from a completely non-legal perspective, I agree. They totally backtracked on that. The whole fiasco a while ago that got Sam Altman booted from the company was a safeguard put in place by Sam Altman to stop himself from making something bad. And instead of it getting stopped, Microsoft just bought it and picked up the slack. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, new follow me on Twitter, add spends, one click, answer, and check out more of my content, and have a good one.